Wow, I'm finally arriving at Second Nani. <laughs> Look at you! Hi! <laughs> if someone comes from another place, there's that kind of honor to our community due to traditional. So in terms, they are very happy. It's a pleasure to give you a Masai name. Real hair, is it? No, no, they wear uh, this is the ceremonial. Good evening, my name is Pasil Telewa, and today I'm not just a presenter, I've had the privilege of immersing myself in Professor Jackie McGlade's world. The Maasai community opened their hearts to me, and I was bestowed with a Maasai name. Guess which one? This journey from the bustling streets of Nairobi to the tranquil Sekenani village has been an unforgettable experience for me. Professor Jacqueline Maglade's work and the warmth of this extraordinary community has left me an indelible mark. Join me as I share my personal experiences and reflections on this incredible adventure. Trust me, this is a story you don't want to miss. I hope you enjoy it. It was somewhere a couple of, you know, months ago when I got to stumble on Professor Jackie's story online. I read a lot of online material and, you know, stuff. So I read about her and what struck me was, you know, her passion for, you know, like environment conservation and climate change and all those kind of scientific stuff. And I thought, whoa, this is really cool. So reading, Father, you know, I noticed that she's not so far away. She's in Nairobi, and so that is how I got, you know, to reach out to her through our team. And I was so glad that it didn't take, it wasn't a hassle, you know, it was like, she was like a phone call away, literally. And so noting that she was just from, you know, the Strathmore Uni, even that made it really easy. And then we went on straight to arrange for when are we gonna sit down for all you know these kind of discussion and more oh, so, uh, I so this particular day we set up you know the date for our interview to happen in her Nairobi home and so with the crew members and everybody you know responsible getting there you know she was really like warm and you know welcoming and generous so we get in and we start doing what we do best you know of course ladies have to catch up a little bit so caught up a little bit on you know what has been going on during her stay in kenya and those kind of things and so we start rolling like we usually do sit down she gives me her story and then guess what she's like you know what i have another home and i'm like okay so where is it at? And then she's like, it's somewhere in Narrow County. And so I was like, whoa, I'll be really happy to go there. And he's like, but you know what? It's a Manyata person. And I'm like, what do you mean? Like you leaving the UK to Nairobi and again to the Manyata? Why? And she's like, you know what? I'm a chief's wife. And you know, my husband is a Maasai chief. So I was like really curious. I just wanna go set my foot there and see, you know, the environment she calls home. And she was kind enough to invite me and she was like, I'm not, you, I just came from the village the other day. So if you really want to go, then I may, we may have to arrange for this coming Saturday, you know, so that we drive over there. And I was like, that will be fine. I mean, I can't wait for that. We're hitting the road when it's already like daylight. So six in the morning, we are cruising. And as usual, I like stopping by, you know, the escarpments for the photo. So we stop over, you know, like take a few shots before we get over to the road and hit the Mahimahi road towards Sekenani. 
And actually the traffic was really, you know, bearable, friendly, easy, not as it's been usually in the past. So very comfortable drive and very easy. I'm having breakfast. <laughs> this is tea and bread at the same time. So I called Jackie, you know, when we are almost nearing, when we've done the junction to turn to Narok. So I called Jackie to find out, I mean, how far are we supposed to go? Because from my map, I see we've gotten lost. We actually take a rough road. And I remember so well that she had told me that we're not gonna go on a rough road. It's tarmac all the way to her place. And so immediately I'm like, I think we are lost. I think we are lost, guys. And guys are like, no, no, no. As long as the Google map is still working, I think we are fine. So luckily she's like, okay, just let's just see how it goes. Luckily we get to connect to the main road and we are super tired you know worn out literally because it's been all like dusty and uh, red soil kind of road we get to the tarmac road to Sekenani I mean after coming from that all weather road and so we keep going because I remember from our conversation she told me that we keep going until we get to Sekenani get so I'm on like keeping on going and I'm like okay where is the second I get I stop for direction to ask like a local Maasai guy like where is the second I get the guy is like just keep driving on and on it's right ahead so we keep driving but then the map is sort of just like communicating something so I called Jackie again I'm just passing a market like yeah it's it's really busy it has lots of Maasai yes 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 it's on the tarmac yeah then you're in the right way just keep on the tarmac all the way to us okay it's okay all right lovely thanks thank you thank you bye bye see ya my map is sort of just now getting it right but where we are at I can see the sign post for Sekenani Wow, I'm finally arriving at Sekenani. Have you been here? Yes, Globe Traction is on the road and you can't wait to see this. Then Jack is like, no, 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 no. I think you got lost because you just passed my homestead. You know, there's a place called Oldapoi or Oldapoi, something of the sort, where you passed and, you know, there are some land cruisers and you can see like sort of attached homestead. That is where my house is. Now, if you're turning from there, just make sure that you can see the first home on your right. So there we are taking a, doing a U-turn back to, to Ewangan, Ewangan village. That is her village. Finally! <laughs> Look at you! Hi. And there we nice are. To see, you. see Jackie. Oh my gosh. With lots of, you know, Maasai warriors standing there. And so I'm telling my crew, like, hey, Leonie, let's see, kuna paka dancers too, I could welcome. You know, they thought I was kidding, but that is the actual thing that happened. We're getting there and then you know like exchange pleasantries and the next thing I know is like you're welcome to my village and uh, this is how we do it and the fact that I really like to dance I really danced and enjoyed you know the Maasai tunes as we call them that whole welcome is so grand you know like it gives you some kind of feeling you you feel some type of way you know like so much has been put into that you know their time you know their dedication to just entertain you and to make you feel really nice and honestly i was feeling goosebumpy and tinklish whatever it is but it was really so nice to see them looking so beautiful you just don't know how their outfits look really nice 
and looks like they've really like prepared they're doing everything in unison it's just so amazing to see how the culture has been put together and still even preserved until today so it reminded me sorry to say of the history class you know of the you know our evolution as you know mankind and everything and just to think and worry about what's going to happen to us in the future because all this culture is likely to just be swept away and it's like the most amazing thing you can ever experience so everything was playing on in my mind right you know at that moment just wishing that we can just have that trapped somewhere and never let it go so that we keep seeing it and our generation and the next generation and everybody sees just how you know authentic everything is everything literally reminded me of that particular class and same to when they blew that horn you know that day it was a significance or rather they use it to call people actually to communicate if there is really an important message that you know the leader of the group needs to pass to the rest of the community members after enjoying the dance you know for both the groups but of course the one that wrapped up being the man you know we proceeded with my host Nasarian, so, who takes me life. on a tour of you know her beautiful homestead she calls it Ewangan village and Ewangan village comprises of like 25 houses across a circle and uh, I was surprised that these tiny manyatas all around you know have an occupancy of around like 170 people 170 people with 40 of these people being you know older people and uh, the rest being kids so that tells you how many kids are in these homesteads so she takes me on a tour on specifically her house and of course a little bit few more houses around the the homestead and uh I like the minimalistic kind of lifestyle that she has there. I mean, does she have an option? It's a really tiny manyata, but still I could see just how, you know, how she's tried to make use of the little available space, you know, in that little house, she has a kitchen and the living area and a bedroom with a study area. A study area that also can convert into a bedroom, like a guest bedroom sort of. <laughs> when she has other people coming in or living in with her and of course we saw that she's used you know the sun which is a natural resource in that in that area to power her house and she uses gas to cook in a manyata that really struck me by the way it may be very ordinary but it really struck me because you're expecting a manyata to have like firewood and people just cooking with firewood, you know, as it used to be, you know, many years back. The, the latest, latest Maasai Mara trend, you know, uh -huh. people in Nairobi have wallpaper. Trends, yes. We, we have <laughs> clay coloured smearing. Actually, and like you see the, the kind of, you see the artwork that goes into it. <laughs> you can see the environment is not, you know, like it's well arranged, it's not as congested, even though it's a tiny little house. And people are so happy, like you can see the smiles on their faces, despite, you know, what may come to your mind as, you know, like not so comfortable living, but they are really happy and hospitable and excited. So it was really just a nice tour to enjoy. After the tour of the houses, uh, Jackie calls me in for, you know, proper dress up as she calls it. And proper dress up is simply to make me look like one of the, you know, community members. So she dresses me up in, you know, like green, yellow, and some some lesser whatever around my around my skirt and dress. 
<laughs> you know, it's just so nice. It feels, doesn't it feel very feminine? It, it feels powerful. Yeah. I don't know. Exactly. If you look gorgeous. The, if that's the right word to yeah, use. Yeah, no, it, it's, it's good. So, um, have we got firewood there to burn the, for the goats? Yeah, the goats. Okay, great. The goat has already been, you know, taken over, you know, by the warriors. But then we have a community where everybody's role is sort of known. We have the person that usually lights the fire, like they're an expert in fire lighting. I see like this warrior trying to just put sticks together. Like what, what are you doing? The guy is literally lighting the fire. See the way we used to light fire traditionally in our history class, I mean, We're like literally with no matchbox, no, no matchstick, nothing. So this guy literally with energy, the guy is so serious until I could see some smoke coming off. Seriously, smoke coming off. And before you know it, the fire is lit. That is the fire that we use to, to roast our meat. And the worst part that I never like to speak about is now it's time to kill the gods. Oh. It's over, it's over, it's over. They slaughtered that god like experts. Like one second, the god was all smiles and you know, like just happy living life. The next session, it was no more. The gods been slaughtered. It's time for the gods to be roasted. So the roasting is done. And uh, while the roasting is underway, we leave and have a sit down, you know, with Jackie to just talk about everything that has been happening, you know, within our environment as you were there. When you met Patrick, mm -hmm. was he single? No, 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 he has a family. He has a wife and three children, three young children. Yeah. But in a different village. No, here in this village. So we're very unusual. We are in the same manyata. Yeah. We live side by side. Yes. Ask Patrick how many wives the father had. How many wives? Nine. Nine wives. Yeah. You're joking. No, I'm serious. Nine wives. How much? How many do you want to have you? Well, if he want, if he can have nine, I'll have, I'll have nine. Yeah. You, want, <laughs> you can manage. Yeah, I can take the nine. Oh, I love it. You and him are quite different people, you know, in different perspectives. Mm. Of course, there's a way you complement each other. But, you know, looking at you and looking at him, you know, and just the, our interaction that we've had, the way you've been brought up, your level of education, you know, the way of, you know, the cultural yeah. standards and living and all those kind of things. Why would, or what do you think people can ask? Why would you come all the way? Why would our professor, you know, be sharing his her life with a with a chief, a local Maasai chief. It's very exciting. It's very romantic. Yes. You imagine you're in the biggest landscape where humans have come from. It, it's it's a kind of so you can't compare it with anything else in the world. Oh, Ashe Oleng. Ashe Ashe. Ashe Oleng. So this is some liver. Yes. Okay. But no salt, you said. Mm. Mm. The men cooked. They should be cooking every time. Mm, it's good, isn't it? Mm. It's nice. Mm. And you know, it's very pure and organic. No spices. You can, you can sort of tell what the animal's been eating. You know, it feels oh, very... Oh, yes. Do you get that kind of herby taste? It's perfect. So yeah, no seasoning, nothing else. The society has changed. Mm. You're very sophisticated, <laughs> very educated you know, very well-traveled. And someone would be asking, what would our old professor be doing with, you know, a local Maasai chief? One of the things that I have always loved all my life is adventure. And, you know, there have been films made about living in the Rift Valley and that. Yeah. So every day you go out, it's like you're living in a movie. But it's real and it's not made up. And it's made of people who are actually able to live in this environment with no help from Western society. And I think that's really what I love, the sense of self-determination, that you can rely on yourself to survive. But this is not, this is not really surviving, this is thriving. Yes. This is thriving. And 
I feel that with Patrick particularly, um, he always has me at the heart of everything he does. He cares about how I am. I mean, he is, he is the perfect husband. The men really know how to cook. It's really good. When you eat, when you eat meat like this, yes. and then you eat meat in Nairobi, mm -hmm. you realize that- feel a lot of difference. This is just, it's a different piece of food. Right? Yeah, yeah. But then what do you do when you get to Nairobi? How do you survive? Eat vegetables. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I'm, I'm, we're careful about what we eat with the children. Mm -hmm. I try to expose them to foods that they will meet <clears throat> in the Western world. Yes. Because they're perfectly happy with this food. Yes. But they have to develop, they have to develop a taste for Western food, and I think it's important that they learn that, so that if they go out do something, you know, then they won't be embarrassed and they'll be able to yes. fit in. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping to do the reverse. Not take away the culture, they won't lose their language, they won't lose their culture, but make them feel really confident that they can be in the, in the big world, you know, and still be Maasai. It's so nice that the men do the cooking in this culture. In this case, the cooking in the bush. I mean, it's the men that captured, slaughtered and roasted the goat, and now they were serving to the women. It felt really nice, I mean, but anyway, I think what really also surprised me is that they didn't put salt in their meat. The goat was already salted, like naturally salted, so there was no additional salt added into it. So as we were enjoying the yummy goat, you know, no gully, by the way. <laughs> no kachumbari as well, not even managu. So everything is just meat. And I'm like, we are eating just, you know, like proteins. Where is the carbohydrates and or vegetable or, you know, something of this? So he's like, no, we just eat meat. I'm like, that is the coolest life ever, don't you think so? <laughs> but anyways, so we're done with our gut eating. I mean, of course, as we go down with the conversation and then when we are done with the conversation, guess what? I'm told it's time for me. And I'm like, what do you mean it's time for me? Yes, it's time for you. We need to give you a Maasai name. You need to be part of the community. We, we have already selected a Maasai name for you. Just like that? And normally, uh, when you have this, uh, according to a tradition, if someone comes from another place, there's that kind of honor to our community due to traditional. Uh, you, you have done so much. You are very good because you decided to visit the community. So in terms, they are very happy. It's a pleasure to give you a Maasai name. This is a reward from the community. So I would like to reward your name. Uh, and you are, the selected name is Nasha. 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 So that's the selected name from the warriors, from the community. We, this is done before or even after. Yeah, we've just started and already selected. And, uh, yeah. So names, we do give names uh, according to the environment, yeah. according to the weather, uh, or according to the activity going on at that time. So right now, mm -hmm. it means that you have got a lot of rain kismet. So that's why we have given you the name Nasha. Nasha. It means uh, mm. somebody with, who has brought rain Christmas to the community. And this community, they are so much happy to have rain, a lot of rain, because of the green pastures due to the livestock. Cows, goats and sheep, as part of the livelihood. And so, you know, like so the... So let me call him the because naming elder. So the naming elder is like, you're going to repeat these words after me to signify that you've accepted the name. And I, I should be honest that at some point I almost missed it out because I was like, okay, my mind is trying to figure out, okay, so what has happened and what's going to happen and so what happens after this. I think things were just like playing around in my head. So. So the guy gives me a clue and I'm like, okay, that's fine. So they start talking and I'm just there responding and responding and responding. 
So apparently they had they had given me a name, but because the weather turned gray and you know clouds gathered like it wanted to drop, actually we had had some few you know drizzles down there. So they changed my name to another name to signify rain. So they were like, uh, they are really happy that I came and I brought the blessings and that blessing was the rain blessing. So you can guess the name that I was given, you know. So everything is done ceremoniously and then when it's finished and the blessings done, then we have to embark again on our journey back to Nairobi. Basically, that was my experience in uh, in the Ma community. I mean, in Sekenani village, in the Masai Mara region of South and Kenya. Thank you for watching Globe Traction. If you'd like to be featured on the show or have a story you'd like to share with us, write to us through Globe Traction at standardmedia.co.ke or reach us through our social media platforms at Globe Traction or at KTN News KE. You can also follow me at Pasil Telewa on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok for more or behind the scenes videos. But until then, I hope to catch up with you again, same time, same place. Bye bye for now and keep watching Globe Traction Show.